Hi, it's Sam Hendrick from Bentley Systems back again. We're here to talk about MicroStation Connect Edition. In this video, which is the fifth in the series, we're going to be talking about basic element creation. We're going to be placing a smart line, placing a circle, and then talking about one of my personal favorite things, which is going to be AccuDraw, single most powerful tool in all CAD history. And then we're going to talk about element attributes, level, color, style, and weight. And then your plus one is going to be, how can I match the attributes of another element while in the middle of a command? So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating some basic elements, talking about AccuDraw, and element attributes. The file we're going to open up is called Creating Basic Elements, AccuDraw, and Attributes. So I'm going to click right here. Now, before we get started in actually creating elements, we should have a short conversation about working units. I've got set up in my second view some information here. This is the design file setting dialog. This is a screen capture. Here you can see we have master units, subunits. Our master units are feet, subunits are inches. This is the way MicroStation works. To the right, we see MUSU, it's abbreviation for master unit subunits. Right now, they're currently set to feet and inches. If I wanted to type in, let's say I make a line six feet, three inches, that's normally how we'd express it if we were writing it down. The input would be six colon three. We always separate our master units from our subunits by putting in a colon or semicolon. So let's close this and let's come back. The first tool we're going to look at is Place Smart Line. So I'm in the Home tab. I'm going to go to the Placement Group, and I'm going to click Place Smart Line. Now, on the Tool Settings window, we have a couple of different options. For Segment Type, we have Lines, and we have Arcs. I'm going to be doing Lines. And then for Vertex Type, we have Sharp, Rounded, or Chamfered. I'm going to leave it set to Sharp. We also have a couple of checkboxes. We have Join Elements, Rotate the AccuDraw Compass, or Always Start in Line Mode. I'm going to start a line here. I'm going to do a data. And the first thing you're going to see is the AccuDraw compass. Now, the square box is the AccuDraw compass. The AccuDraw window is currently docked at the bottom. I'm going to undock this so that we can notice the behavior as we're learning about it. With AccuDraw, you need to move your cursor in the direction you plan to work. In this case, I'm drawing a line. I need to move my cursor in that direction. If you're in the rectangular mode, which I am, X and Y, as I move my cursor in this direction, you can see it activates the X field. If I move it up in this direction, it activates the Y field. And if I move it to the right, activates the X field again, and down activates the Y field. So by me moving my cursor, I'm indicating to AccuDraw which direction I want. It highlights the field for that direction. Now, to put in a distance, I don't have to worry about negative or positive, I just move my cursor and then type in a whole number. So I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to go a distance of two feet, six inches. So I type in two colon six. And now as I move my cursor, you see I'm constrained. I'm going to move it near the X axis. This feature is called axis indexing. So I'm going to use that to define the last part, which is the Y value. I'm going to data left click. And you can see the AccuDraw compass changed in orientation. The green tick mark, which is the AccuDraw compass's positive Y, is now pointing down. So as I move my cursor up, which is the design file's positive Y, AccuDraw says that's negative. Well, to the compass, that is currently negative. But again, we're just focused on which way do I want to go? I want to go up. You just move your cursor up. Don't worry about positive or negative. Now I'm just going to type in a distance of two. And with my cursor indexed, I'm going to data, left click. Now I'm done drawing my line, so I'm going to hit the right button on my mouse, which is reset. Now this doesn't exit the command. This takes me back to the beginning. I'm still in the play smart line command. So I'm going to do an undo. And the next shortcut we're going to talk about is how do I switch between rectangular, which is X and Y, and polar. So I'm going to start another line. And there are a whole series of keyboard shortcuts that control the behavior of AccuDraw. The first one we'll look at is the letter M. On my keyboard, the letter M, you'll notice that the compass changes in appearance from a square to a circle. And my AccuDraw window changes from X and Y to distance and angle. If I hit the M again, I'm back to rectangular. So we're going to look at this. We're going to be drawing to the right, and we're going to go a distance of two. And I'm going to do a data. And now I want to draw a line at an angle. So I'll hit the letter M. 
and this puts me in the distance and angle. And let's say the distance I wanna go is gonna be two feet, one inch, two colon one. And now to get to the angle field, you need to either hit the tab key or down arrow or click in the angle field. It's not like rectangular. So I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard and now I'm defining my angle. So I'm gonna put in 53 degrees and then I'm going to data, left click. Now you're going to notice that the compass rotates to match the angle of the line. This is normal and expected. What if I wanted to rotate the compass back to the top orientation? Well, on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit the letter T and there I'm rotated back to the top. So that's a nice little shortcut there. Now to get back to rectangular, hit the letter M, move my cursor to the left, we'll go one foot three inches, data, and then right click. So the next thing we'll look at is how do I draw something perpendicular to this line? So if I move my cursor here and I do a data to start my line, you'll see the compass is in the top orientation. Well, I wanna rotate the compass to be parallel to this line. There's a two letter shortcut, the letters RE. Now all these shortcuts, they're listed out in the shortcut dialog. To get to that, I can come up here to my search ribbon field. And if I start typing in short, you'll see it comes up on my list. You'll see keyboard shortcuts listed. I'm gonna select it. And then here's a list of all the keyboard shortcuts. So there's a whole bunch of these and we're only touching on a few. So you see there's T for top and there's V for view rotation. The next one we're gonna be doing is a two letter. I'm gonna expand this. This is gonna be RE, rotate to element. That's the shortcut. So I'm gonna close this out. Click on my AccuDraw window. I'll type in RE. I move my cursor over this element. It suspended the play smart line command. I'm gonna data and now the compass is rotated and I'm back in my play smart line. So now I can go easily perpendicular out there. So I'm gonna hit reset. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is placing a circle. So I'm gonna go up to my place circle icon under the placement group. On the tool settings window, different methods. I can do center, I can do edge, I could do diameter. I'm gonna be doing center and I'm gonna pan over a bit here and I'm gonna be placing in some rebar here. Now on the tool settings window, we have an option to lock the diameter and or radius if I wanted to. So in this case, I'm going to lock my diameter and I'm gonna make my values. Diameter is gonna be colon 1.5. So one and a half inch rebar. That's what I'm gonna be putting in. So now you can see my cursor, I'm dragging around, and I'm gonna zoom in again here, dragging around my rebar, which is a circle. Now, this is where we're gonna get into attributes. I don't wanna make my rebar the same attributes as my concrete, so I'm gonna go up to my home tab under the attributes group. I'm gonna change my active level from concrete and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna change it to rebar. Now your organization will have its own level standards that you should be following. And then for my color, I'm gonna change the color from zero. I'm gonna make it color three. And then my line style, which you can see we have a whole host of options here. And I'm gonna change that to two. And then for our weight, we'll make this two also. Now I'm placing this in. Now I wanna place it relative to this point right here. This is where we're gonna learn another AccuDraw shortcut. So I'm going to move my cursor here and on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the letter O and this will get the compass to appear at this point. This is O for set origin. Now I have not placed my circle, I've merely defined a point of reference to go from. So I'm gonna move my cursor to the left and let's say I wanted to go over four inches and then I'm gonna move my cursor up and let's say I wanna go up five inches and then I'm gonna place it by doing a data, a left click, and then it lets me continue placing them like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move up and place another one here and we're gonna say that's gonna be six inches straight up and then I'm gonna move it up again and another six inches and I'm gonna do a data and let's say that's good for now. So I'm gonna hit reset, right button on my mouse and this takes me to my element selection tool. Now the fact that I place these elements with different attributes. If I hover over the concrete, it tells me it's on a level called concrete. If I hover over the rebar, it tells me it's on a level called rebar. One of the benefits to doing 
different attributes, level, color, style, and weight. Color, style, and weight are for visible on the screen and also can be used for printing, but level allows us to turn on and off the display of elements. So if I wanted to turn off the concrete and just see the rebar, I would go to my level display, which is what we talked about in the prior video. It's right up here under primary. And then you can see here are the levels that I'm currently using. Rebar, that's my active level. So I'm going to turn off concrete. One click, I've turned off the concrete. Click again, I've turned it on. Now the rebar is my active level. I can't turn that off. I can change my active level here by double clicking. Now rebar is not my active level, so I can turn that off just like that and turn it back on. So that's one of the big benefits of level attribute. So I'm gonna close the level display and your plus one here is going to be, how do I quickly change my attributes? So let's say I'm back to my place smart line. I'm gonna start a line, let's say right here. And what I wanted to do is draw a line going up at this angle, but I realized that my attributes for drawing more concrete are not correct. I have it set to the attributes for rebar. So what I'd like to do in the middle of drawing, I wanna match these attributes of this element. This is your shortcut. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and I'm going to left click, which is data, on the concrete. You can see I've changed my active attributes on the fly in the middle of a tool. I can hold the Alt key down and data on the circle and I've matched its attributes. Hopefully you found this instructive and we'll see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.